Hello everyone, uh, this is the first video for Top Notch. Um, it's, a, it's a channel that's been linked um, obviously with Top Notch models and masks and over the next few weeks we're going to be trying to do some various bits and pieces, short videos, nothing in there that's going to be hours and hours and hours in length so you're going to have to sit and commit to it. Literally, I'm going to be spending sort of five, ten minutes each time just going through a few shorts, bits and pieces like that. Uh, my name's Darren. Some of you might have seen me around the shows. Um, I've been doing some bits and pieces with Sean at Top Notch as well. Um, and I was going to do a little bit on masks, but um, then this arrived through the door from Edward this week. Um, it's a sample of the new Wildcat, and I thought, what better way to start a video or a series of videos than an unboxing of something that a few people probably A, want to see, and B, that they haven't seen before. Now I will say at this point here that what's in the box, I've already taken it out of the bags. The reason being just to save a bit of time and so you don't see hands fumbling to try and remove sprues from bags. So standard Edward box art here is really, really nice looking. There's uh, quite an evocative shot there, quite colourful. Um, again, looks perfect Edward Profit Pack style packaging. It's a good sturdy box. It's a living tray type box with a good corrugated baseboard to it. So in the box you've got three decal sheets, more on those in a bit. A small errata strip for the instructions. Let's just move those decal sheets out of the way. A small split, split, a clear sprue. Let's move these and I'll come on to each of these in turn. One, two, three, four, five grey plastic sprues. A nice colour instruction sheet, some canopy masks, and a small photo etch fret for the cockpit parts and a few other bits and pieces. So let's get the box tray out of the way and let's actually have a look at some of the bits and pieces on the sprues. So first things first, let's have a look at the fuselage sprue. Let's just move that out of the way so it's not in the shot. There we go. So first things first, let's just have a look at the spr fuselage sprue. And I have to say at this point, when I first looked at this a couple of days ago when it first came in, I was pleasantly surprised in that Edward had put two sorts of rivets on the fuselage. Those of you that got a Tamiya kit will know that the fuselage riveting is strong to say the least in fact it's sort of some would say probably overdone um, in the case of this you've got both very 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 flush rivets which is probably very hard to pick up on the video but you can see it and in certain places where they wanted to put more strength they've actually put raised rivets in places too this is a really really nice touch from Edward because it shows the different parts of it Again, I don't know how much of it you can actually see on the video, but you can see it's you can see there's plenty of rivet detail in here, bits and pieces like that. There's some small sidewall detail on the inside of the cockpit uh, cockpit there, um, and being a profit pack, this document holder here has to be removed. I should imagine it stays there for sort of later later toolings and bits and pieces like that. Okay, so that's a fuselage sprue. Looks really really nice. Coming on to the wings, now if you're wanting folded wings on this kit, you're going to be out of luck because the F4, F3 didn't have, a fold, didn't have folded wings in the first place. Later boxings of the F4, F, um, the F4, F4 onwards and the FM1, the FM2, you may well get the folded wing option. Who knows, I don't know what Edward's plans are for this. But as far as this one's concerned, no, there's no folded wings in here. But what there is looks really, really good. Plenty of detail on access panels. Lots and lots of nice rivet detail there. Um, flap lines are nicely defined, which is good if you're going to be using the aftermarket flaps and you want to have the flaps lowered. They're moulded shut at the moment. There is an aftermarket set available. Okay. Again, nice and clear in there. There's a small location point there for the main spar. More on that in a moment. So on the whole, and this one's got a slight bit of damage on it, but it's not something that's going to cause too much of a problem. I shall sort that out. Okay. That's probably my fault and not Edward's, to be perfectly honest. Okay, the next sprue we've got here has got most of the other fl flight control surfaces, and there's also some bits and pieces of the engine in here. And what you can see here is if I just point my finger down at this bit here, 
you can see how fine the molding is. Uh, and Edward have got very, very, very good at that over the years. And uh, something else I'll bring your attention to as well is we look at the aileron detail here. The way that they've done the fabric of the de of those details is absolutely beautiful. Really nice stitching detail on there. Different trim tabs, bits and pieces like that. Um, you've also got on here a set of drop tanks, small pair of bombs, um, and some of the engine parts as well. There's also some plastic parts for the cockpit there. No doubt you're probably going to need to remove um, bits and pieces of that if you're going to be using the photo etch. If you look at the back end of the engine there, which I'm just showing you here, again, that's really, really nicely moulded for 48 scale. Looks good so far. Okay, you can just see here there's some 50 calibre machine gun barrels. With regards to those 50 calibre machine gun barrels, Edward also do an, a resin set for this. And that resin set again looks very, very nice. Okay, the next sprue I've got along here, and I haven't done this by way of in any order or along those lines, is just as I'm picking the sprues up. Um, now it starts here that you're going to start getting some choices of parts. As you can see here, there are two different instrument panel bulkheads, um, and across here at the bottom here we've got the instrument, we've got the cockpit floor, and over here you've got the engine, you've got the engine firewall and the main spar. Coming down here, more cockpit parts. Here's your seat over here, rudder pedals over the top here, and then we've got the undercarriage parts. Now these undercarriage parts look incredibly thin. They are thin and they are to scale, to the best of my, my knowledge. Um, I would suggest that real care is taken actually cutting these off of the sprues because there's every chance you might accidentally damage these if you're not careful. Okay, but again, detail level on these looks absolutely brilliant. If I just flip it over here again, you can't see too much more, but again, you can see there's some slight detail on the inside of the undercarriage doors there. And yeah, again, it just looks really, really nice. Okay, final sprue on here, we've got another in instrument panel bulkhead. Now they are usually offer three of these, depending on whether you're gonna use the look set, the um, their 3D printed decal set, or their photo etch set. Or, if you want, you can just paint it yourself. There's lots of, lots of options there. Again, it's good. You've got both banks of the engine cylinders here. You've got a small push rod section at the back here. Again, more engine details here. And this is a first on a Wildcat. As far as I can tell, nobody has, measured, nobody has actually done things like oil coolers and intakes and bulkheads and everything else on a, on a 48 scale Wildcat before. How much of it will be seen underneath the cowling? Who knows, but there's certainly going to be some there. Okay, yeah. Okay, and then we've got a head headrest at the top there. This is for the back of the cockpit. Again, molding is very, very good, and we can see there's different cowling options here depending on what you're going to be making. So I suspect there's the F4, F3, the F4, F4, and probably the FM1 and FM2 series, because the only real difference is going to be wings and fuselages from that point. Moving swiftly on, because I don't want to make this too long a video. Um, clear parts, again, with Edward, absolutely crystal clear. Four different windscreens, again, depending very, very much on the variant you're going to be using. In the case of this one, there are two different ones for this kit. Uh, either the one here, which has just got a notch out of it for a telescopic gun sight, or you've got this one here, which has got the normal gun sight. There's a small windows for the base of the... Um, fuselage there and again this is looking really really clean neat tidy well molded so moving on we'll just have a quick look at decals photo etch so decal sheet now edward decal edward decals lately the jury's out by a lot of people i can't say because i've been using top-notch masks mainly that i have been using the new Edward decals. This will probably be the first one where I've used the new Edward decal, so I'll let you know what I think about them when I actually use them. But if you look at the decals themselves, they look really, really nicely printed. Um, you have got, just looking at the box there, two, four, six different options in the box for various either pre-war Wildcats or sort of early Pacific War Wildcats, um, right up to about 1942 at Midway Island. There's another small decal sheet there, which is an errata for another part of the kit. And there's also some later war US stars there. Okay. 
Just moving on quite quickly, photo etch. If we look at the photo etch here, again, really, really well put together the photo etch. Lots of options there. Plenty of seat belts on there. There's everything you're gonna need in there to make this a reasonable or make a really, really good replica of a Wildcat kit. Okay. Finally, of course, being a profi pack, canopy masks are in there as well and everything's there um, and just quickly instructions for those of you that haven't built an Edward kit before Edward's instructions are beautiful really clear really easy to follow you do have to watch things where it calls out different marking options because they offer so many different marking options um, paint call outs are for either the Gunsy range which we carry or the Mission Models acrylic paints, but I'm sure you can work out others from there. It tells you where to use your masks, where to apply your photo etch, and there's a full list of paints down on here telling you exactly what ones that you do need. As a key point, it does actually call up a mix for the cockpit colour. That being, early Wildcat cockpits were bronze green, they weren't interior green. So therefore it will be a slightly different green to one that you're used to for a lot of US, US military aircraft. So that's about it. From an inbox point of view and how it looks, the proof's going to be in the building and I'm going to be clearing the, deck, the bench fairly quickly to make a start on it. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, it looks like it's another classic Edward kit. Edward at the moment are doing something very right in that they're producing in-house, therefore they can control costs and the cost of this is coming out at around about £30, which when you compare to a lot of other kits at the moment, I'd say with everything that you get in the box is an absolute steal. So that's about it for this one. Um, if you did enjoy this or you've got any comments, please, please, please put comments in the bottom below. Um, the way that YouTube works, unfortunately, is it does work by algorithm. So if you like what we've done and there's other bits and pieces and there will be more to come and we'll probably get it more professional as we go. There will be more to come. If you can just hit the subscribe and the uh, notification button, that will be great because that enables us to get our information out there to a wider audience. OK, that's it for this time, guys. Um, and we'll probably see you next week with something else to talk about.